Mm. Hello and welcome to Online Sunday School from Holy Ghost Lutheran Church. That's right, you guys. We are starting something new for all of those people who uh, want to be at Sunday School right now, but for whatever reason are choosing not to or cannot. So we are going to bring Jesus to you through that little screen that you're watching us through. Either it's on your phone or on your TV or on your computer. However you do it, it doesn't matter as long as we're getting your eyeballs on some Jesus, okay? And if you haven't been able to join us for uh, the last few months, that's okay, because we're gonna start these online videos back where we started in September with in-person Sunday School. So you're not gonna miss anything, and eventually we'll get caught up. We're going to do a new online Sunday School video every two weeks, okay? So every two weeks, check back here on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel so you don't miss anything. And bonus points, Watching from home means you get to watch this whenever you want to. It doesn't have to be on Sunday morning. That's when the videos will go up, but you can do Sunday school on Monday. Call it Monday school if you want to, Friday school, Saturday school. Whatever you want to do, go for it, just as long as you get some, like I said, some Jesus in you, okay? And uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get started, welcome to Sunday school, everybody, or Friday school, or Tuesday school, whatever, whatever your flavor, it's cool. How do we usually start Sunday school? Well, we start by singing happy birthday to anybody who had a birthday that last week. So if anyone has had a birthday in the last week or month, or if you've not been to Sunday school in months, if you've missed a birthday, if we haven't been able to sing to you in person, pause the video right now and make your family sing to you right now. Do it, okay? I'll wait. Pause me right now. Unpause. Okay, did you do it? I hope you did it. I hope you did it. I want to know if you did it. Comment below and say if your family sang happy birthday to you. I don't care if your birthday was in October, okay? You needed a Sunday school sing-along birthday time, and I wanted to make sure you got that. So, birthdays, check. The next thing we do in Sunday school is take prayer requests, right? You see our prayer board right here that we did on Sunday. And what we have on our prayer board for this week is birthdays, got that already taken care of, didn't we? Family, important stuff. Candy, we're real thankful for candy right now. We want healthy babies, we're praying for healthy babies. We are praying for an end of COVID and God to be with all those people that are suffering from it right now. And we are also praying for Escar Tilly's Mimi. What else can we put on our prayer board, you guys? I encourage you to, since we're doing this from home, make your own little prayer board, start a prayer list, and you guys pray for whatever that stuff might be, okay? Pray as a family, pray on your own, um, but do that, okay? I'll give you some time, if you want some time right now to compile a prayer list, pause me again to do that right now with your family, okay? Three, two, one, go. Did you do it? Okay, cool. Now that you guys have a prayer list and we have a prayer list, let's open our Sunday school time in prayer. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow. It's time to talk to God right now. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this time of Sunday school, time that we get to come together, uh, either than if we're apart, but still connected through you. Jesus, we give thanks for all that you've given us, and we ask that you hear the prayers of your children this morning. We ask that you uh, be with all those people who have birthdays this week, who had birthdays last week, and anytime anyone has a birthday, Jesus, just make sure their birthdays are great. God, we also give thanks for our families, our moms, our dads, our brothers, our sisters, our pets even. We give you thanks that you have placed those people in our lives, and we ask that you help those family groups to grow stronger together and grow stronger in their relationships with you. God, we also thank you so much for candy. Jesus, we also ask that you be with all of the babies in the world right now. Help them to be healthy. And anyone we know who might be pregnant or you're growing a little baby, help those ladies to grow strong, healthy babies so that those babies can be born and they can grow again in you, Jesus, and in faith in you. God, we also lift up uh, the COVID situation that we are still in right now. We ask that you bless those people that are suffering from COVID right now or who have loved ones that are being affected by it. 
help them know that you are still in control and that you have a plan and that uh, no matter what happens, God, that we can count it all joy and all things will work out for good for those who love you. God, we all so humbly ask that you bring an end to all of uh, the COVID-related stuff that's going on right now so life might get back to some some kind of normal, realizing that was life ever really normal. Jesus. Um, and then also, last but not least, God, we lift up Eskar's Mimi, and we ask that you be with her and help her to feel better from whatever is going on with her. And uh, right now, you guys, you can pause me again so you guys can finish the prayer with uh, all the stuff that you guys wrote down on your prayer request. Okay, ready? Pause me, three, two, one, go. All these things and more we ask in your name, and all God's people said, Amen. All right, now that we've prayed, we can start our lesson. And guys, we're going to do lessons a little differently now. I mean, obviously, it's already different because it's online. But more than that, we're going to start focusing on different aspects of God. We're going to be asking some questions. Who is God? What is God? How is God? And we're going to answer them with some God statements. And if you haven't already noticed, I've got the first one right here. The first one we're going to be talking about today is God is real. What does that even mean? Is that even a question you had before? It's okay, we're going to talk about it. You and your family are gonna do some fun things to learn about it. And hopefully by the end, you'll have a bit of a bit better understanding about the realness of God. Okay, so the next thing we need is to collect our supplies for today's lesson. Today, we are going to need a Bible. Obviously, we're always going to need a Bible in Sunday school. Some markers, some construction paper, at least one piece per kiddo in the family. A pencil, again, one per kid. And last but not least, a cup of water, again, one per kid. Now that we've gotten all our materials and supplies ready, let's start the lesson. And to start off, I've got a question for you guys. I wanna know, I want you guys to share with your family some strange sights you've seen in your lifetime, all right? some Something strange or surprising or even weird that you have witnessed with your own eyeballs. Not a YouTube video, not a viral TikTok or anything like that. Something weird that you've experienced in your life, okay? And I'll give you an example. How many of you guys were thinking it was so weird a couple weeks ago when it snowed here in Texas? And it didn't just snow and then melt, it snowed and it stayed. Like I was seeing people post pictures and it looked like we were living in upstate New York or something. That was strange. That was surprising to me. So I'm gonna give you guys a chance to talk about that in your family. Talk about it for as long as you need to, okay? And pause me to talk about that. And I'll give you a pause screen in one, two, three, pause. Unpause. We have seen some strange things, haven't we? In today's Bible story, we'll see how God uses a strange sight to get Moses' attention. Then Moses could see that God is real. Let's explore God's special book, the Bible, to find out what Moses saw. And remember, if it's in the Bible, it's true. So this really happened. So let's open our Bibles, guys. We are opening our Bibles to Exodus chapter three. And if you are going to be using the hands-on Bible that you got from Holy Ghost when you were in second grade, you can find Exodus chapter three on page 60. It's really not far into the Bible because it's only the second book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, boom. And once you've got that open, you can set it aside and we'll come back to it in a minute. All right, have you found Exodus yet? Good, awesome job. What we're gonna do now is play a little game, okay? I want to give you guys 30 seconds. I know that's not a lot of time, just 30 seconds to find as much evidence around your house that the people in your family are real. 30 seconds to find all of the evidence you need, all the clues you can to prove, to show that the people in your family are in fact real. So I'm going to set my watch to 30 seconds starting in a second i will tell you and you guys have 30 seconds to run around do as much as you can to collect again all the evidence you need to figure out that your family is real all right ready here we go go oh time's going already quick 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 what can you find 
What evidence, clues around the house can you find that your family is indeed real? How are you gonna do this? How are you gonna prove it, guys? Hurry, run, 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 run. I mean, unless your parents don't like running in the house, then just like walk with purpose because we only have 10 seconds left. Hurry it up, guys. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hurry, 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 and now stop. That was actually more than 30 seconds, so I hope you found a lot of clues slash evidence to prove that your family is real. What evidence did you find that your family is real? Call out your answers, and I'm gonna act like I can hear you saying it back to me. Whoa. Nice. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> it's pretty easy, right, to prove someone standing right next to you or sitting right next to you is real. You can see them, you can touch them, and you can hear them. But today we are learning that God is real. And what evidence is there that that is true? After all, we can't see him, we can't hear him, we can't touch him in the way that we can do all of those things with people in our family. So let's look at an encounter Moses had with God and search for evidence that God is real. One way to know your family members are real is that you can't hear them. And we'll see that Moses heard from God. It all started when Moses saw a bush that was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. As Moses got closer to check it out, this is what he heard. Here's where we go back to our Bibles. We've opened it up to Exodus chapter 3, and I want you guys to read as a family Exodus chapter 3, verses 4 through 6, okay? You can pause me right now. Unpause. How does this show God is real? What did you find? What kind of evidence did you find uh, showing God is real in those few verses. Not only did Moses hear God say his name, plus identify himself as God, but God went on to tell Moses a lot. He told Moses he was going to rescue the people of Israel out of Egypt where they were slaves. He told Moses he'd give the people of Israel a new place to live with plenty of food. He gave Moses specific instructions on what to do. Oh, did you guys find all that in those verses? That's a lot of information to fit into three verses of scripture. Let's see what it might be like to hear God speak that clearly. We're gonna play another little game. What I want you guys to do is pick one person from your family to close their eyes, to cover up their eyes, and another person in, their, in the family to give them simple commands, like Johnny Boy, go walk, three steps forward. Johnny boy, sit down. Those kinds of things, okay? And see how easy it is to hear those commands. And you can all you can all take turns if you want to. Pause me again while you guys play this little game. Pause me right now. Unpause. Okay. How well could you hear your family members? Compare that to how well you hear God. Oh, it was don't know if I hear God as clearly as I could hear my family members when they were telling me to do simple commands like that. I could hear them pretty clearly, and sometimes I can't really hear God that clearly. I wonder if it's the same way for you guys, too. Sometimes it can be hard to hear God the same way we hear a human voice. In fact, you might even start to wonder if God is real at all. But we just saw evidence that God can speak as clearly as your family spoke to you. Plus, God still speaks today. It might not be always a voice we can hear, but God speaks to us through the Bible, through other people, through what we feel and through what we sense in our hearts, and through his creation. We know God is real because Moses heard him, and we can listen for him today, too. Another sign that your family is real is that you can touch the people in your family. We can't touch God, but God did ask Moses to partner with him to do the work of freeing people from slavery. You can find what God said in Exodus chapter 3, again, verses 8 through 10. So pause me again to read those verses with your family. Ready, set, go. Unpause. Here's the thing. Moses didn't really want to partner with God. That job kind of seemed 
hard. Partnering with God, partnering with the creator, the most powerful being in all the universe, as a tiny human, yeah, prop, seem, seems scary to me too, Moses. But God had chosen Moses to be his leader. Moses didn't get to touch God, but he did get to work with God. And that's almost the same thing. Let's see how well you can work with people in your family. We're gonna play another little game, and I want you guys to form pairs within your family and take turns leading each other across the room while one person has his or her eyes closed. To lead each other, partners should link the arms. In families, this is another time that you're gonna need to pause me, ready, set, go. Unpause. What was it like working with your partner? What's something you think you could partner up with God to do? God is real. When you and your partner linked up, you could work together to accomplish something. Even though we can't touch God, we can still work with him to do important work like telling people about him, telling people about Jesus, or showing his love to others. When we do God's work, we can often feel his power working through us. Now, a third sign that people in your family are real is that you can see them. I'm looking around our room and I can't see God, but let's look for visual evidence of God in the story that we've been reading today and make visuals that we can see too. We're going to explore four different fun ways that we can kind of recreate the visuals that God gave to Moses in our story. The first thing we're going to do is draw flames using our paper and our markers. And then you can either, you can even cut them out and put them on different parts of your house to make it look like it's on fire, but not actually burning up. The next thing we can do is take our pencils, toss it on the floor to see if it becomes a snake. It's not going to, but then we can take it in our hands twiddle it between our fingers like this to kind of make it look like it's wiggling around almost like a snake and be reminded of the sign that God showed Moses to prove that God was real, is real. Another thing we can do is take our cup of water, dip our fingers into it so our hands are wet or snowy like in the Bible story, put our hands behind our backs, wipe our hands on our clothes or on the furniture or something. It's just water. It's not going to hurt anything and whip it back out to see that it, show that it is dry, just like in the story, and be reminded of, again, God's power, God's realness. The last thing we can do is take a scrap of paper, color a part of it red with our markers again, and if you don't have red, another color will work, but color it really good so it's covering a lot of that piece of scrap paper, dip it in the water, and swirl it around until the water starts to turn the color that you colored the paper almost like God turning the water into blood in Egypt. Check that out. See, and this is yet another way we can be reminded of God's realness like Moses got to see in person. And parents, remember, you can pause and rewind this video whenever you need to, to uh, go back and hear something I say again, okay? It doesn't have to be just when I say to pause, all right? So after we do all those activities, wow! God is real. Moses didn't see God himself, at least not in this story, but he sure saw a lot of miraculous signs that proved what God is real. We did make some silly imitations of those signs. Of course, they were nowhere near as amazing as the real signs from our real God, but they nevertheless can point us back to God and kind of help us imagine what it was like for Moses to see those things really, really happen. Moses got to see a lot of signs, but you know, I think we get to see signs all around us too that help us understand that God is real. They're called God sightings. God sightings aren't times when we see God like how we see a person, but they're times where we see evidence that God is real and at work around us. And if you guys have come to Vacation Bible School, VBS, at Holy Ghost Lutheran Church, you know about God sightings because we talk a lot about them there too. So right now, real quick with your family, while you're still all gathered together, pause me and tell them about a God sighting that you might have seen this week or recently. Okay, go. Unpause. When we see these God sightings, whether they be big or small, they're sightings that God is real. 
They're ways that we see God. So Moses got to see the burning bush to prove that God is real. Then he got to hear God and had a whole conversation with him about how to set the Israelites free from slavery. Then God gave him even more visual ways to prove that God is real. And after all that whole experience, Moses went on to partner to, with God to do something amazing. God is the same real God today that he was for Moses. God told Moses a name that shows God is the same all the time. Read Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Pause me while you guys do that and ready, go. Unpause. What did that verse say? What do you think the name I am even means? How does that name show God is real today like he was for Moses thousands and thousands of years ago? I am is a name that shows God is always the same. He just is. We can pay attention to how God is real as we listen for him, work alongside him, and look for those God sightings. That brings us to the end of our lesson for the day. But before we say goodbye, we are going to pray ourselves out of here. We're going to pray uh, a in, in a bit of a different way than we usually do here, okay? First, put your hands to your eyes like you're using binoculars and repeat after me. God, because you are real, help us see you at work. Now rub your hands together and repeat after me again. God, because you are real, help us feel you with us. Now cup your hands behind your ears and repeat. God, because you are real, help us hear your voice. Right now, we want to hear only your voice. We ask you to tell us something about who you are. We're listening now, God. Pause for a second. Listen. your name we pray. Amen. All right, that is going to do it for our first online Sunday school lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed sharing it with you, and we'll be back in two weeks with another lesson for you guys to do at home. And uh, as always, we are here every week in this very room in the Fellowship Hall at Holy Ghost Lutheran Church at 9.15 a.m. on Sunday mornings for in-person Sunday school. So if you guys are ready to be there for that, join us. We'd love to have you. If you're not quite ready, that's okay too. That's what these lessons are for. And parents, don't forget that you can like this video on Facebook and YouTube if you don't already follow us on Facebook and YouTube and share this video to other people on social media who might follow you. I would love for this video to get out there and be a reason that somebody else might understand that God is real, especially in these trying times right now. Another thing I would love for everybody to do is comment on the video. Commenting and liking really helps the video get elevated and sh uh, shown to more people. So do that for me as a personal courtesy and uh, comment what you liked, comment what you think could be better, comment the funny things that happened while you guys were watching the video, so, uh, send me pictures of you guys doing it. I'd love it all. So until the next one, I'll see you guys later. I love you. Bye.